Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Is your life an adventure? Uh, sometimes people uh, think of their life as, as a life of adversity, but we believe in turning adversity into adventure. God, uh, God has a great adventure in store for all of us, and that's why we say at Deep Adventure Ministries, the most radical thing you can do in your life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I had a really cool text just a few minutes ago from someone that asked me, my nephew that asked me, uh, Uncle Bear, is reading the Bible, could that be considered a form of prayer? And um, yes, because prayer is a two-way conversation, and the Bible is God's love letter to you. And there's a way, uh, it's, there's ancient tradition going back to the time of King David, uh, at least that far back when he would pray. Well, he wrote the Psalms as prayers to the Lord, and he would he would keep the different watches during the day, different times during the day when he would stop and pray. And that tradition carried forward into the primitive church, when at the time at the time in every every town of a, that had a had a certain uh, level of, of population to it in Ro in the Roman Empire, the bells would ring about every three hours, and the Jewish people made that their time of prayer. Um, there's an ancient tradition of rising early in the morning uh, at the very first, just before the first crack of light, you know, the, the color, you almost could hint that the sun might be coming up, and praying until it rises. And the ancient Hebrews and the Christians did this, and the same thing at sunset, when it set until it was dark, and they would be praying the scriptures back to the Lord. Um, that's what the Liturgy of the Hour is, that was practiced by the monks of the desert and formalized by my, my uh, St. Benedict. I'm a Benedictine oblate. And so I pray the Liturgy of the Hours, and a lot of you subscribe to the Magnificat, which is a kind of a uh, layman's... It's, this, it's the same thing that you pray when you pray the full liturgy, but it's more uh, accessible. And really, my wife and I pray that one in the morning over coffee. So can you... Is, is, is reading God's Word a form of prayer? Absolutely, because there's no... It's a beautiful prayer when you pray the, the Psalms, for example, and you pray the scriptures back to God, and it's a way for Him... Uh, to speak to you. There's the tradition of Lectio Divina, meditating on God's Word. And the Bible says in Joshua 1, that, well actually there's two places, I think it's in Psalm 1 and Joshua 1, where the word success, I guess a word that we use in our society a lot, the word success uh, shows up. And it says, um, if you meditate on God's Word, success will attend all that you do. Why? Because if you're meditating on God's Word, you're going to be doing God's plan. <laughs> Things work better when you're doing God plan, God's plan, God's way, and God's timing with God's grace, power, and help. And how you meditate on God's Word, the word meditate comes from the, in the Hebrew, is the word ruminate. So it's not like the Eastern religion of emptying yourself and, and you know, of, uh, and becoming perfect nothing. We decrease so that He may increase in our hearts. And by meditating on God's Word, when you read the Word in the morning, every morning you start by meditating on God's Word, doing the Liturgy of the Hour, or, or, or reading through the great Adventure Bible's um, narrative timeline and read through that, that Jeff Cavins did, and reading through scriptures. Um, you read the Word and then ruminate. A cow eats the grass, swallows it, and then kind of spits it up into a different and chews it and swallows it into a different stomach and then chews it and comes up and goes into a different stomach and that's how he digests it and so when you're during the day when you meditate on the word in the morning it kind of shows up again throughout the day a scripture verse that you meditated on that morning kind of the lord begins to speak to you remember when this morning you read this have you ever thought about it this way or you're ministering to someone or praying for someone and you've got that word right there that 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 pregnant word that god spoke to you in the morning and there's a difference between the rhema and the logo, logos. There are times when you read the word when you're just reading the word, and it's beautiful. But there's sometimes when you're reading it, it's like it just jumps off the page. You know what I'm talking about. So love scripture, and of course, praying, praying the Bible is, is, the, is, a, is a perfect prayer. Okay, we have as our guest today, I'm very disappointed in him, actually, 
but we're going to have him on our show anyway, Mark Hartfield, with the That Man Is You program and many other things, Paradisus Day. I'm almost in shock. I didn't expect this when we because you know we have a, a YouTube version of our show and we're doing <laughs> Zoom video. I thought for sure he would have a long beard because so many of my friends and guests during this COVID thing became Eastern monks. It seemed like with Father uh, Father Don Calloway when I saw him in 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 Oregon, <laughs> he looked like either ZZ Top or. Uh, or uh, uh, an Eastern, uh, you know, Greek monk, uh, and I'm just so disappointed to see Mark is is his hair is short. He's he's freshly shaved. I don't know what to think of you. Did you did did, did, did the whole COVID uh, thing pass you by? You never became a an Eastern just, ZZ Top I just, monk. I just shaved it off. If you would have seen me ten minutes ago, as someone reached out and said, "You got to shave for the bear show," <laughs> and uh, I was like, "I don't understand." I thought a, a bear would be more, you know, masculine and, and just with hair. And they said, "No, you got to shave." And so I, I, I shaved. Did, did you ever? Did you let it grow out at all? Did, did, a little bit. Do? I did a little. I can grow like just the the quick the quick beard real fast, but I always get tired of it. Like you a, have a week or two in, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, scratching and itching. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. You're one of those guys that has a five o'clock shadow at nine a.m. I think. <laughs> I, I get that five o'clock shadow, but then I feel like after you're you're with. A, let, let's let the audience know what you do, who you are, as far as uh, this great work that you do with the, that that man is you program is something that I believe in so much, and what's your role there? And tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I've been with that man is you for over sixteen years. Uh, so from the very beginning, when we were just in one parish, uh, and to now over you know, 700 parishes and 25,000 men coming every week. And currently for the, about the last four years, um, I'm the current developer of that. Yeah. Steve, Steve's working on a couple other projects. Um, and the, in that time, the program has transitioned a lot. Uh, so the first three years of that man is you is a 26 week men's program, right? The first three years are hundred percent Steve Bowman giving all the presentations. And now what I'm kind of trying to do is it's a multi-speaker series. And so we're bringing in all sorts of speakers and giving. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Like, who are your speakers? In. Oh, man. Uh, the, the one, I'll just tell you the one I'm working on right now. Uh, it's called Year 7. It's going to be called Thy Kingdom Come. We've got, uh, let's see, Father Dave Pavanka, Ralph Martin. Oh, I love Ralph he, Martin. He's great. Father Leo comes and actually, Father Leo Padalingha, the uh, yeah. cooking priest, he actually comes. No and cooks, kidding. <laughs> he cooks on the show and preaches about the kingdom of God while he's cooking. It's He's a showman and he's preaching the gospel. So it's, yeah. it's fascinating and it's fun. And he um, doesn't c cuss like Ramsey does, right? He, when he's cooking. He doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> only after the camera. No, just kidding. He does not cuss while he's cooking. Uh, last year we had Scott Hahn. Um, we had... Dr. Mark Miravalli came, Dr. Bergsma. Oh, I uh, love Dr. I love. Who, yeah. who, who did you say, Mark, Dr. Mark? Uh, Dr. Mark Miravalli. I love him. He, I had him as one of my professors. Me too. Uh, at Steubenville. <laughs> and I, I had no idea when, I mean, I loved his course. It was a course on spirituality. Mm. But I didn't know his, his intimate relationship with Mother Angelica and mm. I think with Caviezel. He, he's kind of a mentor yep. to him in some ways. and. And I and I interviewed him on my long ride home TV show when we were cruising through Franciscan University. He said the most profound, encouraging things to me, and it was exactly the right thing at the right moment. Because I was facing I thought, tremendous yeah. adversity, and he he like he just read my mind, read my heart, and, said, and he spoke to me, and it just ah oh, okay good. I find him to be a very holy man, uh, and his class was that way, and I've gotten to know him. And the last couple of years, a little better as, as as more of a friend, and I just think he's got a, a friend holiness. as a friend. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I'd love you know him to I mean? be a friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would definitely him, call him I a friend. Get him back on my show again. Um, he, but he's yeah, he said you know, and a lot of people may he, he hasn't been as popularized, but he's been teaching at Franciscan for a long time. He's also teaching at Ave Maria. I mean, even the things that we have seen popularized, though, like Father uh, Gately's Thirty Three Days to Morning Glory. Yeah. Well, he was a student of Dr. Miravalli as well. Amen. <laughs> Francis well, Ginn. when so. you know, when we met to do this interview, um, he said, "Let's meet at the Mar I think there's a Marian Chapel there on there mm -hmm. near the Still Cross or something, and that's where we met. So he has a, a, a real devotion, as you do, absolutely. You know, yep. to Mary. Yep. Yeah. So lots of great speakers. Um, yeah, I think we've had over 25 or so in the last four years. So 
It's wow. uh, that's what the guys have been asking for. They've said that they love the program, they love everything about it, but they they also, you know, want some a little bit of variety, and so we're trying to provide that for them. And it's just been a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, I, I've made a point, uh, Mark, in my in my radio show. I don't know if, if you guys are aware of this, um, but I've made a point to interview almost everybody on that list uh, of, the, of the of people that have that are, that are the leaders that are part of your of um, on your website. It, right, it, right. CMLA website it lists a lot of the part, people that are kind of part of the leadership I've interviewed probably 70 of those men I made a point to do that because they're all doing profound ministry and we want to promote what the Lord's doing we'll That's be awesome. right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure we're talking to Mark Hartfield he's right in the middle of a great move of the Holy Spirit and that's the, the That Man Is You program we'll talk more about that when we get back hey man I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to talk to the mama bears out there. You know, this is people see this as a men's ministry, and that's my target. I focus on the men because we know if it's gritty enough and real enough, the women are going to really dig it too. And so I want to talk to the mama bears. People think of mama bears, some of the soft, cuddly mama bear, but we know the mama bears out there. Uh, like my my son and son Jeremiah came up to me uh, a, about a half a year ago when, when I be, I coined the phrase mama bears and the women that really support our ministry in prayer and in bringing men to it and, and just, in, and just uh, you know, enjoying and getting out of the ministry for themselves too personally. He said, hey, Dad, remember in Montana when we had the cabin in Montana, which my sons and I built, by the way, just two miles from Canada, right, in Glacier, right on the border of Glacier Park. And he said, remember when we came upon, across the, uh, upon those mama bears with their cubs, how, how uh, dangerous they were? So we think about mama bears. The women who who are who love our ministry and, and support our ministry, uh, they're tough, they're gnarly, and they're ferociously defending their families and wanting to bring their men to to the faith. and And they see this as a as a way of communicating. You can go to deepadventure.com, Mama Bears, and subscribe to our newsletter. And every week, you can take that newsletter because it has that week's guest uh, video version of our radio show, and you can share that with the men or anyone in your family and enjoy it yourself. But you also can join the Mama Bears, and if you do, you get a you get the the coffee mug, part of the mug club, and it's uh, more porn every roar. But guess what? Someone gave us forty or so of these Mama Bear little teddy bear things. They're Catholic bikers. Can you see that, Mark? Mark? It's a Catholic yeah, cool. teddy bear. And so <laughs> really the, cool. for the first forty or so women that join the Mama Bears, they get the teddy bear too. So it's pretty cool. The Mama Bear uh, Catholic biker teddy bear so we just letting you know we love you mama bears you're the ones when we walk in to mass uh cindy and i walk into mass you may be sitting there uh with your kids or maybe alone 
and you're wearing a wedding ring and you have and your heart is just pouring pour it out to Jesus for the men in your life and that's what our ministry is about is to answer that prayer so thank you for, for participating with us and that's what Mark Hartfield is here for his his he, the that man is you program I think is the most significant part the most significant thing that's happened that happened in the men's movement in the Catholic Church and uh, and Mark is right in the middle of that he's the developer for the curriculum at that man is you paradises day so Mark you were you were I interrupted you because I got so excited about Dr. Mark Miravella but you were talking yeah. about how you have as the program has evolved you bringing more different types of right. really incredible speakers what is the, that if, if no one's ever been to a that man is you program uh, what can they expect right um, it's a it's a men's program where we meet typically on a weekday morning um, or a Saturday morning real early really early like 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah um, and it. you gotta we produce a 30 minute video we have rich Catholic content quality incredibly rich quality um, and then the guys break into small groups for 30 minutes and in and, and that already is that's the secret like just to do a small group without a lot of content that's great and all but sometimes the conversations go to who knows where right when you provide them rich Catholic content and then put men into small group um, the two go together so well um, and that you give the guys something to talk about and, and give them some key questions and points to stay on task and they 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 have this fellowship, right? One, they're breaking down the content into their lives and making it very practical. But also, they see they're not alone in this Christian walk. And so, you know, there's there's this band of brothers kind of dynamic that takes place. Um, there's no such thing as a lone soldier in the battlefield. There's no such thing as a lone Christian. Like we can't do this walk on our own. We need a band of brothers. We need friends. We need our family. Um, and so that's what we try to provide. We do it in the context of a parish, typically. So we're trying to grow, we're trying to partner with a parish. So it's not one of these programs that tries to come to your parish and, and kind of take men away, but instead no, the men of the parish come together and then together they can decide how they want to give back to the parish and get involved in the parish. So um, it's an incredible program and we have everything done for for the teams. It's yeah, a I love program it. in a box. It's a turnkey system. It. It's you, you, we need, you have one guy does this, one guy does this, one guy does this. You have a software system all set up for them so people can log in and, and are notified of meetings. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's the way if I was uh, going to put together a new business program that I would do it. So you, the, one of the things I saw, Mark, I went to a – the first men's conference was about 10 years ago, and I think it was in Tampa. And I was like, who are these guys? I mean – I, I was amazed at how the men that were there had taken their business talent and turned it into being served by the Lord. And I, where all these guys come from? And he goes, well, and someone said, well, I think uh, Jamie Derzapolsky or Ted Scarpino said, most of these guys are involved in this thing called That Man Is You. And then I, I got to find out about that. And then I see in the That Man Is You program, it only takes a few and maybe eventually hopefully get 10 guys and each of them kind of have a job, and it's a turnkey system, and they know what to do. And people use their men, that use their their talents and abilities God's given them, to bring men together. And so I contacted you, and we brought it out to Hawaii. There's two or three that man is you uh, programs going here in Hawaii now, and uh, you were out here last year. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was nuts. It was uh, it was last March, so it was yeah. right before the craziness of COVID really hit. It was while it was happening. And so we yeah. came out for, Steve and I came out for a one day men's conference. And originally we had plans to like stay for the week and have fun. He'd never yeah, been to Hawaii I before. wanted to take you surfing. Yeah. <laughs> I would have loved to do it. And as it got closer and closer to the date, um, you know, it's just like, oh, they're shutting down this airport and <laughs> yeah, yeah, travel yeah, here and there. And we're like, we don't know. I don't know if I want to leave my family. So we end up flying in on a Friday from Houston to Hawaii and we got to the airport. We went up Diamond Head. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one thing we got to do. Uh -huh. Went to sleep at night, woke up in the morning, did a one day men's conference uh, with Steve and I and got on a plane that night and flew home. And all those and men, at, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, and it was just, and it just shut, the world just shut down. I mean, literally yeah. two days later by Monday or Tuesday, we're back in the office after that experience. And every one of our that man as you parishes was getting shut down. Wow! Yeah, because it's true. every diocese was shutting down, and we were like, "What just happened? <laughs> the world just changed overnight." And then and you so had we, to, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we, yeah, no, we just had to quickly, you know, 
turn, uh, be quick on our toes, switch over to kind of a Zoom format and keep as many of them as possible going. And so the guys were grateful. Um, and, and, and it and ends up a lot of innovation took place in a lot of ministries during this time. So it didn't, so coming back absolutely. out of COVID, it's not like they're leaving that behind. They're doing both now. So it has. That's right. That and that's our access. game plan as well is we want, we really, really want to get back to the live meetings and some groups have already gotten back and yeah. I've seen them. It's refreshing when you, speaking of Tampa, I went to Tampa a couple months ago and it was a live, I hadn't been to a live that man as you in a year. And they had 80 guys show up, Christ the King, Tampa. Yeah. Oh, and they're yeah. in their, their community center. Gave That's we'll Florida. St. Joseph. <laughs> and it, was, it, was, it was just awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. And you're in Texas, right? Yes, Houston, yeah. Texas. Yeah, Houston, Texas. Yeah, you know that, that men's conference that you mentioned? I got to tell you about the genesis of that. We, we had a little regional event to start with. It was kind of my idea to put this thing together, the men's conference. I think it was me and Ron Gokenauer. And... Uh, the first one that we did, they thought, well, no one's going to come because the Filipino guys are kind of macho here. There's a lot of Filipino, and there's, you know, they're not going to come for this. But but they did. We had about, I think, maybe 50 men come. And you know what we did? We gave them all a screama uh, sticks. I don't know if you know what a screama is. It's it's the Filipino martial art. And I used to be an instructor in it. So we had everybody beat each other up for the first five or ten minutes just to get to know each other. <laughs> and, then the, and, then, and then the men realized, okay, this is a man thing. I don't have to become a neutered male to become a Catholic. I can, I can be a real man and yeah. uh, beat people up and stuff like that. And then the men's conference came, the first one. And that day, it so happened that I got a really cool guest appearance on Hawaii Five-0. I was supposed to help speak at that first conference. And, it, and, uh, and I asked Jason Jones, my buddy, I go, what should I do? I'm supposed to be at this conference. And, and I got this gig with Hawaii Five-0. And he goes, dude, do Hawaii Five-0. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's cool. Yeah, so that's the genesis of that men's conference. And it was so cool to see you. And I thought we were going to get to go surfing and all of that sort of thing. But th th this whole That Man Is You program, every single one of the men at that conference are either a member of That Man Is You or a member of That Man Is You brought them. So if, you, if you're not part of That Man Is You, you can go to what website, Mark? Thatmanisyou.org or just TMIY.org. That's good. That's easier than Paradise's Day. That is easier than Paradise's okay, Day. Okay, what, what is it again? Thatmanisyou.org or TMIY.org. I mean, we're going to talk to you about why you call it that when we get back. But you you know, a, lot of men, a lot of men say, oh, you know, my, 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 my brother-in-law goes to one of those, and he's so lucky they have one in his parish. But we don't have one. And I always just say, dude, it's your fault. Start one. Start one. Call yeah. Mark up, and he'll t he'll g he'll give you he'll tell you how you how you get and a couple of volunteers. At the end of the day, we, we don't even, we don't call it a Bible study. We don't we call it a men's leadership program. Amen. And, that's what it is, and, and that's what it is, and that's what it takes to get started. Yeah, it takes a couple of leaders. Two leaders can can pull it off. That's exactly. Right. It takes two. That's what I tell them. It takes two, and then the third one will show up, and the other the other guys will participate. But there could be Absolutely. no greater ministry for a man than to start a that man as you program. I hope that several of them start because of the, our conversation with you today. We're talking with Mark Hartfield, vice president, and he's and he's the main developer of the curriculum uh, at the that man as you program. Can you believe that you get to do that, Mark? No, absolutely not. It's, it's, uh, it's, I, I loved, uh, loved the job even before I was doing it. I'm just a big believer in uh, what it's accomplishing and, and seeing the transformation in the lives of men and in their families and their communities and churches. Um, and getting to work on it in this particular way is, is a great joy. And it makes me rely upon the Holy Spirit every moment of every day. It, it's a great because, joy, um, and it's a lot of work. we got to take a break, Mark. We'll be right amen. back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. 
Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We've been talking with Mark Hartfield about That Man Is You program. It's, it's, it's a men's leadership uh, outreach where men uh, gather in small groups uh, in, the, in the church, usually, um, early in the morning, one day a week, uh, during the time when school's in session, usually. And they get up early and they, 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 there's, a, there's a video that they watch and then they have a conversation about that. What I love about That Man Is You is that um, they have the Las Vegas rule in play. What is said at the That Man Is You uh, meeting stays at the That Man Is You meetings. And they used to do, I don't know if you could still do, but they used to do uh, to give a little sports tidbit at the beginning of each. So when if, you, if your wife asks, so what did you guys talk about? And you go, oh, we talked about baseball, you know. But we have something <laughs> <clears throat> that we want to invite to men too, um, similar to That Man Is You. And uh, we, we actually a- a- have a thing called Bears Man Cave. And we just had our Zoom video meetup uh, yesterday, and it's men all over the world, actually, and some are even Protestants that are part of this man cave. It's a secret Facebook group. You can't join by going there. You go to deepadventure.com to become a member, and you can you, you get a bunch of other men just like you, you know, that are like the Cave of Adullam, where, where, where King David's, all these men would show up, kind of the misfits, the people who owed money or running from the law, you know, or maybe running from their mother-in-law, I don't know, but... But they all kind of gathered there, and God formed them, and they formed each other, right? That's very important, to become the mighty men of valor that became became David's army. And so we're there. We're all bozos on the same bus. We're all a bunch of knuckle draggers, but we hope to, and we seek to, and we're on a quest to grow deeper with God and become God's men. And so we... We, we text, I mean, we message each other, we, we post our needs, we post inspirations, and we talk through the Facebook all through the day, but every couple of weeks we have a Zoom video chat. And it's just very rich. And a lot of people, a lot of men are isolated. I've known, I, I think men are just, a lot of men are frankly, they're lonely. And, uh, and uh, they need the fellowship of other men. But a lot of the men in the men's, in Bears Man Cave, we help them launch their local, a local man cave or a local that man is you group. And, 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 and start that local kind of pack, that band of brothers, getting them together. And that's why I very rarely have someone on more than once. That's why we have Mark Hartfield back on, because his leadership uh, in the That Man Is You program is, is tremendous. So I'm going to ask you this, and then I want to talk about your new this new book, The Hinge of the Hail sure. Mary, with great title. Uh, but which, is, which if you're a man and someone says, well, we talk about the rosary. Uh, ah, come on, let's talk about something more manly. There's no, there's no greater weapon than the rosary. So, or so it's a, it's a great weapon that we want you to have in your quiver. But, Mark, what is the? If someone wants to start a that man as you program today, they call, they reach you at tmiy and org. org, and what, and what do you say to them? What, how do you do that? Uh, we, we have a whole. Um manual <laughs> we can we walk them through step by step we teach them everything of how how the program works how to recruit at their parish who are the men on the core team they need to get how to get your pastor's approval so from a to z we give them every single tool that they would ever need we provide them the website where they can sign their men up email their men we already have all the emails written uh, for the year so we really truly provide everything so that they can focus on just going to get the men right and we teach them um how to do that personal outreach and that personal contact. Sorry, my door keeps beeping. My kids are in and out of the back door all night. <laughs> oh, that's so so. You, so that lets you know the kids are are busy. So you you can you know you know you're they're aware. Busy. That's cool. Yeah, you know if they go out in the middle of the night, that hey, what are my kids just? Someone's that's out so, there. How they're many two-year-olds. kids do you have, Mark? How many kids? I, I've got four. I have three girls and one little boy. Do you so play the rosary with them? Well, we do. We do. We we're not. I, I'm a daily rosary. I, I pray it daily uh, for myself. We're not quite the f- family. We don't pray it every day together, but we pray it. Um, we do pray it together. Uh, and my 12 year old is, she's hit sometimes praying it every day, but she kind of ebbs and flows when she's praying it every day. So it's, it's rubbing off. I know my mom used to have these. Two year old, pr- not so much. My mom used to have play, <laughs> what they call, she called it play rosaries. 
They were rosaries, but they were kind of bigger beads. And she called them, as soon as she called them play rosaries, I, oh, I like to play. And so we would pray the rosary together. This is when I was like four years old or something. But this new book, The Hinge of the Hail Mary, where'd you get the title of that book? What does that mean? Yeah, The Hinge of the Hail Mary. I literally stole it straight word from word from John Paul II in his letter on the rosary. And this is what he says the hinge of the Hail Mary is. Uh, well, first, he, he says the rosary. We have to, he says we have to rediscover it. You know, I, I, I listened to John Paul II's rosary in Latin mm-hmm. on the Laudate app. You know, he leads you through awesome. the whole rosary. It's so beautiful. So, he's, yes. he's the best. He, he says it's his favorite prayer. And he says, first off, we have to understand it's Christocentric prayer. That, yes, it's very Marian in character. Its nature is Marian. But at the center, and the, the word's easier, right? Christocentric, Christ at the center. And he says, literally, the Hail Mary, when you go to the middle of it, the hinge between the Hail Mary and the Holy Mary is the name of Jesus. Oh. That's the hinge. He also calls it the center of gravity, and the Hail Mary is the name of Jesus. And I'm like, oh. I love this. JP2, then, man. <laughs> JP2, right? And he goes further, and he says, the, a sign of a meaningful and a fruitful rosary is when we're focused on Jesus, he's the person of our contemplation. So we're not just saying words. And he says that, but sometimes we pray it at a hurried or a rapid pace. We have spiritual ADD, etc., And we're just saying words and we lose focus. He says our focal point is the name of Jesus. And he says in some customs in the church, they've added a short phrase after the name of Jesus to associate it with the mystery at hand. And I'll give you an example. Like today, uh, you know, it's Friday, happens to be a Friday, um, Sorrowful Mysteries, Jesus scourged. Like the second one, so every Hail Mary, you'd pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Jesus scourged. <gasps> Holy Mary, Mother I've of God. I've never heard of this. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So that's, that's the hinge of the Hail Mary, the name of Jesus, and then the little clause afterwards, Jesus scourged, or Jesus crowned with thorns, or Jesus who died for me. Oh, or Jesus, the bread of life, or Jesus, the joy of the world, oh. Jesus risen, Jesus crowning the queen. I mean, I love these these phrases. And so um, I put this book together, just basically taking John Paul II up on what he was calling for. He's saying, he says, this is a praiseworthy practice, especially in group prayer. It helps uh, focus us on yeah. what we're supposed to be focusing on with a rosary and we can rediscover the power of it. And then Mary's role is to aid us in our contemplation, right? She's the uh, first contemplative Christian. Yeah, um, she pondered these things in her heart. In her heart. And, yeah. and John Paul says that Mary's life was a rosary. I love that statement <laughs> because he said, and this is what he means by it. Her life was a rosary. She spent her, because it tells us what the rosary is called to be. It's called to be a contemplation of the person of Christ. That's what her life was. She was always pondering these things in her heart. And then what I've added to that is Joseph's life was a rosary because that's what Joseph did for 30 years in Nazareth. He contemplated the face of Christ together with Our Lady. Mm. And that was the life of St. Joseph. So I've been telling everyone this year in this year of St. Joseph, the most practical thing you can do in the year of St. Joseph to be like St. Joseph is to pray the rosary, Mm -hmm. which is at one hand a very contemplative prayer, and on the other hand, it's a weapon of mass destruction or yeah. <laughs> mass salvation. And so you have this, um, you know, Joseph's the patron of the universal church. Our church is in great struggle. Mm-hmm. We can be like Joseph when we bring our church into prayer with us in battle, We're using this rosary on behalf of the church. But he's also patron or guardian of the Holy Family. And our families are under attack. And so, mm-hmm. again, in this rosary, so, I, so I've been trying to teach people the, the contemplative side, but also the, the weapon side. And, and so as we pray it, each, each decade, we, we have a very specific intention. So, for example, the first decade, I had, we have all the guys pray for their spouses by name. And then a little mm. short paragraph, a couple sentences about what their spouses may be going through. Uh, but we pray for our spouses by name. And so that intention becomes my daily prayer for my spouse. I'm going to offer one decade for her. I have to do it. Right. If, if the family's under attack, then she's under attack. And who else is going to pray for her if I don't? Mm-hmm. Right. 
If right. I'm not praying for my spouse, who is? Right. Um, and then the second decade, I have them pray for their children by name. Um, and then the same, the same drill. Like, yeah. If, if yeah. you're not praying for your children, every, who's praying for them? Every de- yeah, my children a decade a day. That's hey, it. Mark, we got to take a break, dude. Okay. Okay, so we'll come back. We'll, I don't want. We'll, we'll get. We'll, we'll 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 get that. We'll get that rolling again. We'll be right back. Sounds great. This is the Bear Wasing Adventure. But uh, men, go to tmiy.org, and if you're not a if if you're not a member of a of that man is you, they can show you where you can uh, participate. And if you don't have one near you, then start one. Come on, you know the guy in the black pickup truck. I'm talking to you. Start start a that man is you um, program in your church and change people's lives it'll change your lives too and by the way if you want to go to our website it's deepadventure.com if you subscribe to our newsletter you get to get uh the video version of our radio show the day before it airs and you can download my most recent book deep adventure the way of heroic virtue for free so um go to our website deepadventure.com but go check out tmiy.org too and become part of that manager we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure That's right. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm talking to a man who changed a lot of people's lives here in Hawaii. Uh, I called him up, contacted him at one point, maybe 12 years ago or 10 years ago, and I said, can we help, can you help me? What is that, how do we get that man as you started? And you met Ron Gokenauer out here and a few of the other men. And, yeah, there's uh, some great guys in Hawaii. Ron is amazing, wow. he's a servant. Love that guy. And I feel like I kind of got that man as you rolling, and then all of a sudden the Lord launched my ministry into more of a you know, na- national type ministry or whatever. But but that man as you means so much. And Mar- we've been talking, Mark, about the rosary. You know, uh, the the rosary until recently when John Paul II added the, the, the luminous mysteries, uh, to pray a full rosary meant you prayed it three times through to go through all of the mysteries. And then at the end, there's those three Hail Marys. And so there's 153 Hail Marys you would pray. And this is one of the ways where you think about Mary's intercession is, did you know how many fish the net brought in when Jesus said, cast the, cast the net out on the other side? 153 fish. So the, the rosary is a significant way to intercede for the, the people in, the people that you love in your life that are, have drifted from the Lord or who have a special need for the Lord, pick up the rosary. If you walk into my house, uh, my black belt is hanging because I, I want the intruder comes, I want them to know you probably don't want to come in here. But over my black belt is hanging my warrior rosary that Tom Sullivan makes. The paracord rosary is the one I have now. And, uh, and uh, you know, Mark, I've really not in my life really gone to the rosary as I sh- as I could uh, in a contemplative way and you're inspiring me to do that but to me it's my weapon I, I that if I, I don't know any other way to intercede other than to pre- grab the rosary so t- tell us more about w- this this new book the hinge 
of the Hail Mary. The hinge of the Hail Mary. Yes. And so this is Mark's new book. New has, book. It come, has it come out yet? Yeah. Yeah. You can go on Amazon and get it. And um, the way the book is set up, um, we really try to help people with three things. The first five pages or five chapters, are, it's a short book, little sections. You just read a little bit a day. It's trying to help people understand that the rosary is Christocentric, that it's about Jesus. And Mary helps us enter his contemplation. The second section is about what you just mentioned, helping it to be contemplative. The, uh, John Paul II, he said, it's the beginning of the contemplative life, right? Because oh. we're bringing, yeah, it's so beautiful, right? We bring in uh, vocal prayer with meditation, but also contemplation. We ask, oh. we ask Our Lady and St. Joseph to help us. And here's the thing, to enter into the mystery. Like we're never going to solve these mysteries. We're never mm. going to fully understand the incarnation or the resurrection or the ascension into heaven, but we can enter into them and ponder them and grow in our understanding of them. And the church does that over time as well. And we can do that as well. So, so we enter into these mysteries. Um, I like to sit in silence after my rosary because I feel like it's hard for me to just go from 150 miles an hour with daily life with four mm. kids and a wife and work <laughs> and running things. And then, uh, okay, now Lord, I have a few minutes of silence for you. Like your brain doesn't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I like to pray the rosary and then afterwards have that silent time where I'm not even mm. trying. It's not like I'm trying necessarily to, you know, it's more like speak Lord for your servants listening. Praise God. And then just allow God to give you something. And it's not like it happens every day, but sure enough, he speaks. Um, and any, I can just say without a doubt, any good thing I've ever done, that's been of an initiative that, could be quote unquote from me. It's Amen. always come in silence from God, a hundred percent of the time yeah. in mass or after praying a rosary or just whenever. Um, and so then that next section is uh, how do we weaponize it? And I mm. love that you said that because my personal testimony with the rosary is I, <laughs> I did marry in consecration in college. I consecrated my marriage to marry my wife to marry my wrote my, um, uh, my first couple children to marry. My wife and I wrote a, a Mary consecrated uh, consecration for teens. And I still wasn't praying it every day. I prayed it sometimes and I loved it. And I told people about Our Lady, but it wasn't until I really understood it as a weapon and then had a system for weaponizing it, which was every decade meant something very specific. To right. Me. Yep. I'm going to offer me this too. decade yep. for this thing. And once I did that, now it's like, I can't not pray it. <laughs> because right. uh, when I when I say the first one's for my wife, I, I just have to do it. When I say the second one's for my children, I have to do it. And as a man, now uh, you know I'm forty percent done. I'm going to finish. <laughs> and, you know, isn't it interesting how that is? Oh, I'm yeah. going to do. I'm going to pray fifty, and then all of a sudden, oh, I'm already on the third decade. You know, yeah. and I usually you when I'm praying the rosary, started. I'm usually I'm usually in motion when I pray. Me I'm too. walking with my wife, or I'm or I'm stand up paddle surfing, or or but I'm usually in motion. Do you know what I'm saying? And Absolutely. Because it, it gives you this energy you can't cut. But and so that's there's why a, there's a rhythm to it. There's a, like a, there's yeah. a rhythm to it. And, so and all of a sudden you turn motion. the cor- all of a sudden you turn the corner and you're on the back stretch, you know. And and and, and so isn't it interesting how when you pray the rosary for a specific need, uh, cor- you know, like a specific like I'll always go and I don't do necessarily always a novena, but I do a novena. I'm gonna pray for this person who's not treating his wife. Uh, not cherishing his wife. I'm going to pray for him for nine days. And it is interesting to see, yeah. oh, something happened, to watch Mary's intercession work in people's lives. Amen. And one of the most beautiful things that happened, and there's been a lot of things. Um, we would have never chosen COVID, and it's not like I like it by any means, but we started a rosary, a virtual rosary over the summer. Oh, yes. Uh, it's been almost a year. Um, and we started, you know, some people came, et cetera. It's up to over 500 men. We, we pray every Friday morning uh, at 6.30 Central. That's not good for Hawaii folks. <laughs> it's a, so we don't get any Hawaii. We get a few California. They, they wake up very early, 4.30. Yeah. We pray this rosary together. We do, the, we do this practice of the hinge of the Hail Mary. We add this mm. little clause to it. Beautiful. I display a PowerPoint so they have an image too. So mm-hmm. an image of the resurrection or an image mm. of the ascension or Christ on the cross. Great work. And it's just so beautiful to have that many men come together every week. It's And we've become like a little family. 
Well, we were talking so, about we were talking about Dr. Mark Miravalla earlier. God bless mm-hmm. you, Dr. Mark. And I told you how I, you know, when we go out and shoot long ride home, people say, "Do you ever come under spiritual attack?" And I go, "No, never. We're on the attack, mm. but we receive, we do experience resistance." And it was a hellish day, very wow. difficult day, and it's just spiritual, not not logistical, just an attack. And uh, and 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 uh, I got to see Dr. Mark, and he had these encouraging words. And we rode our motorcycles into Lansing. I know I. I forget where no it was into um in, into um a, a small town not not lansing and my friend pat gervais was there and he prays the rosary every single day night he's called the catholic biker and every night i think at eight o'clock on facebook he he uh he prays the rosary he's a member of the man cave he's the voice of long ride home in my radio show if you hear his voice uh when you listen to my show um and i was so like just so beat up and like, oh, I made it to the hotel. And I walk in, and there's a lobby full of people with Pat in front from the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry mm-hmm. praying the rosary. And I was like, I felt like I was just falling into their arms, like, oh, thank you, Jesus, you know. And so he prays the rosary every single day for the, the man cave and for others. And so we always know we can, we can, we can you know, message the Catholic biker on YouTube or Awesome. Uh, and say pray for us. So men gathering to pray the rosary, and you know when I speak at um, the legatus, different legatus functions, there's always a rosary before mass, and those people are sacred people. Those legatus people are special people. Yeah. Mark, you are too. You know it's it's a real honor to know someone who you, you have this real transparent love for the Lord. You're a disciple. You have a discipline in your life, for example, in your t- prayer life. But it's almost over. Anyone I know that's involved in the new evangelization is pretty much overwhelming. Mm. You know, but no one I know in the new evangelization complains about that. <laughs> they, they, they'll, no, say, I mean, they'll talk yeah. about it, but they say it's such an honor. And they say that the Lord's, uh, the Lord, when I'm weak, then he is strong. Um, so thank you so much for your ministry and just the example that you are, I want to send this YouTube off immediately to my nephews. My sister Dawn has been very stricken by COVID as we prayed before we started the show, been in the hospital for five year, five weeks. My nephew, uh, Nick Maloney, when I, we were with my father, who was a Catholic deacon when he died in September, uh, Nick was there. And he was wearing my father's rosary, praying with, praying with my father during the time he was at my sister's house when we knew we re- he was going to be going home soon. And he wears that rosary, and he's become a he's become a rosary prayer because of my, what my sister's going through. He wears it everywhere. He, I don't even know if he understands the. He's just beginning to experience the power of, of praying the rosary. So I'm going to ask him. You got to listen to this this conversation I had with Mark Hartfield. And the name of the book and where can they get it? Uh, it's called The Hinge of the Hail Mary, and you can get it on Amazon. Yeah, I got man. I love you, Mark. You're just the best. <laughs> I just appreciate you, respect you because you you have this devotion for the Lord. You have all, you have children. You have a rich life, but you have this organized, disciplined way, and you're fulfilling the mission God has given you at that man as you. And you can find out about that at at tmiy.org, and you be, can can become a find out how you can join that man as you, or better yet, how you can start one. You guys, we got we got a roll, Mark. We got a roll. Yep. And you know what we say here in Hawaii, Aloha. You know that because you were here last year. So may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.